Hi, I'm Lee Tushler from Design World Magazine. We're here in Carnegie, Pennsylvania at the Professional and Amateur Pinball Association with John Replogle. John is ranked 20th in the world for playing pinball. And John is going to take us through some of the mechanics of a modern pinball machine. John, some of the technology hasn't changed a whole lot since pinball machines were first invented, but um, nevertheless, it's still pretty interesting. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what we have displayed behind us. Right here we have a play field from a modern Stern Star Trek machine. And uh, a lot of the technology is actually the same as the technology you would see from a 1950s machine. Um, basically, most of a pinball machine runs on solenoids and it runs on electromagnetic pulses. So here we have a flipper assembly. And the, we'll show the front end in a little bit, but it actuates by pulling the metal plunger through the uh, coil. And if you hit the flipper button, the underside looks like this. And that's actually a flipper, a flipper being energized and held. If you want to hit your flipper button there, you can see it, you can see it actuates the other side of the flipper. And that's running probably about 50 volts of uh, direct voltage current. What are some of the actu other actuators on the uh, game board here? Um, on the play field, you'll find uh, the, the slingshots, which are actually pictured here. And those uh, are right above the flippers on the actual playing surface. You also see things like the pop bumpers, which are pictured here. And you'll be able to see the front end of that in a minute as well. There's also things called vertical up kickers. And there's actually ma a lot of magnets that you'll find uh, on modern pinball machines where they energize and hold a ball in place for theatrical effect. One other interesting aspect of a modern pinball machine is uh, the use of LEDs. I think older machines you're more likely to find incandescent uh, lighting, right? That's right. Um, modern machines you're using all color changing LEDs that can display multiple colors based on the mode that you're in while playing the game or based on the theatrical effect they want to create while you're looking at the game. Okay. It also means that the uh, the wiring harnesses we see here, if it was an older board, they'd probably be uh, a little bit more to them, right? Um, actually, on an older board, it, mi it might not be a, a lot more complicated in wiring. These are pretty simple. You can actually just grasp these and pull them out and you'll see the LED that just plugs into a uh, wedge-based harness. One of the other aspects of the um, uh, board is as you run a, a ball over a, um, a area of the board, it'll sense that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So those are basically, in general, you're going to see a lot of micro switches on it. If, if you want, I can pull the play field down and we can take a look at that. You, they actually actuate, and they're just basically a switch underneath the play field that closes for a second. All those the actuators and uh, sensors all go to a, to a controller board. Can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like on a modern machine? On a modern machine, it's going to look like these back here. And uh, this is actually a power driver board over here. It sends different voltages through. They're actually marked. You can have 5 volts, 12 volts, 18 volts, 20 volts, and 50 volts. The 50 volts is generally used in the high power solenoids like the flippers the slingshots, or these things called pop bumpers back here. And they, those actually, if you drop a ball in, they'll throw the ball all over the play field and make things lots of fun. Lower voltages are used for lighting effects, and mid, mid voltages are used for things like flashers, which are high-powered, short-duration bursts of light. One last thing before we leave this machine is uh, the tilt mechanism. Um, what, what's that really consist of? The tilt mechanism is just a, uh, a weight basically a plumb bob suspended and if you nudge the machine too much as I'm going to do right here it'll connect with the wire ring that circles it and it's a really old-fashioned technology that it's not really modern but it does the job really nicely to determine if somebody's actually shaking the machine or not. Does it really pay to nudge the machine? Nudging the machine, it, you only have three ways of interacting with the machine. You can interact with your flippers, so you have two flipper buttons, and you also have the ability to shake the cabinet. It's a physical game. And if you don't shake, it's basically like chopping off your leg. 
or chopping off your hand because you need to be able to do that in order to make it effective. As long as you don't tilt it. That's right. Just can't tilt. That's, that's the only rules in the game. So it's you versus the machine, and you have to do whatever you can within the rules. Well, that's a modern machine. Now we're going to go back in time a little bit and look at something that was made a bit ago. We're here in front of a machine called CardWiz. CardWiz was designed and built but back before there was such a thing as microprocessors and even before there was a wide use of TTL logic. It uses relays and steppers to do its controls and John's going to tell us a little bit about how that all works. CardWiz actually, as you were saying, there's no memory circuits involved so they actually had to use low powered coils also solenoids, the same operation as everything else on the machine basically, to memorize what the position was of a particular feature or a drop target position or memory for the scoring even. You'll no probably notice on the machine, there's actually really not that much different from modern machines. The flippers still act the same. If you hit it, it it's pretty much the same device as it is now. And this is 40 years be uh, before the other machine we took a look at. The stepper units, uh, it's all just switches and notches into wheels that actually tell it where it's at in position. So when a ball hits a uh, sensor on the game board, the signal goes back to basically a relay, right? That's correct. Um, so one of the most dis distinctive features of an old electromechanical machine, which is what we call these EMs for short, is the old chime units. And you can see, that's me just hitting it with the tip of my finger, but if you actually hit the play field, then you can also see these stepper units in action. They'll actually move and advance to a different location. What's the relationship of the stepper to the um, game operation? What determines where the stepper starts and finishes? Well, the steppers have a set progression. They move around, and depending on what switches are closed and what the settings are on the wheel cutouts, that'll tell it where it is in its operation. And it can go all the way back around and reset to a certain position if it starts a new ball, for example, or if you complete a certain set of objectives on the play field. We're looking at the back of the controller board for CardWiz, and as was the case on the playing surface, everything's electromechanical. John, tell us a little bit about uh, how CardWiz keeps track of scores. Well, like any other electromechanical, it uses a score reel, which is a mechanical device that actually rolls in a circle to give you each of the numbers through the viewport on the front of the screen. And you'll see the relays here, just like the relays that were under the play field. And you also see another stepper unit here, which has lots of switches and stuff to remember the position of the machine. So it's all, it's all not solid state. It's all uh, abacus logic, as I like to call it. So it's, it's very mechanical in nature, and it sounds absolutely unique. Plenty of fun, I'm sure. Oh, they're all plenty of fun. There's nothing better than playing a game of pinball. Well, John, thanks for taking us through the machines and giving us a look behind the panels. How can people get more information about the uh, papa.org, your website? Well, uh, if you want to get more information on pinball videos and competitive pinball events and amateur pinball events, you can check out www.papa.org. We have lots of videos on competitive play. We actually have live TV shows there. And remember, there's actually probably a local pinball league near where you live, and you can go out and have fun. So the next time you see a pinball machine out in the wild, go play it. It's a lot of fun, and it's sort of complicated, as we saw here. For sure. Thanks, John. Thank you, Lee.